I grew up in 4-H and FFA like many uh, people did, and I've had beef cattle since I was about 10 years old. Um, so I've had a, a, a lot of experience with, uh, with beef cattle. We've you know, fed beef cattle. We've got uh, beef cows. Beef cows are my primary enterprise. And we still run uh, uh, a fairly uh, large size herd of beef cows on our home farm. The type of livestock that we're talking about will determine specific requirements, but all animals in general have general requirements for energy to fuel all the bodily processes. They have requirements for protein, which is a building block, so muscle tissue and that sort of thing. And then uh, they also have requirements for uh, many uh, uh, micronutrients, uh, like minerals and vitamins, and there's quite a vast array of those nutrients that are essential, specific to cattle. Um, cattle are unique in that they have a, a unique digestive tract uh, that has a large fermentation vat where uh, feedstuffs can be uh, fermented by microorganisms. So uh, that allows beef cattle and sheep as well um, to utilize various uh, feedstuffs that are of no use at all to humans or uh, to s or swine or poultry, uh, species like that. The, the biggest cost in producing livestock of any species is feed. And again, that will vary depending on the species that we're talking about. If we're looking at um, a swine farrow to finish operation, or a swine, let's say swine farrowing operation, where we're just producing baby pigs or wiener pigs, the feed cost might be 50%. If we're looking at a beef cattle feedlot, the feed cost might represent uh, 80 or 90% of the total cost of production. Distiller grains in, in its various forms, so we, you know, we can talk about uh, DDGs, dried distiller grains, or wet distiller grains, or modified uh, moisture uh, distiller grains, all have become um, very important sources of uh, feed in, in terms of beef cattle production here in the U.S. in the last uh, probably 10, 15 years. But distiller grains are essentially what's left after the starch has been fermented. So you've really got everything else there in a concentrated form. If, if corn has, uh, say, a sample of corn has 3% uh, fiber, uh, you, you know, you've got to end up with a product that's got uh, um, probably 6 or 8% fiber. If, if uh, corn has 7% protein, you end up with a product that has about 30% protein in uh, distiller grain. So, so it's, uh, if you have fat content of, say, 4%, you, you end up with a fat content, you know, 12, 15%, something like that. So um, it does concentrate all the other nutrients. So, it, so distiller grains in, in its various forms, whether they're dried or wet or whatever, are, uh, are a, um, uh, actually have a, a higher nutrient value per unit of weight than corn itself because we're concentrating all these other uh, nutrient factors. And uh, the relative value then is somewhat, you know, somewhat greater than corn, has uh, excellent energy value, but also protein value. So it can be a very flexible supplement in situations where you have, um, where you need energy, distiller grains can provide energy. But in situations where you say you're feeding a high corn diet in a feedlot, and you, what you really need is uh, protein, it can also serve that function as well. So uh, it's a very versatile feed. Um, you know, I, I, I have more experience personally with uh, beef cow production and uh, there you're looking at usually at low quality feedstuffs, kind of low energy feeds and that sort of thing that are also lacking somewhat in protein. And distiller grains or other co-products uh, uh, serve that purpose very, very well because they can add a boost of energy but also provide the protein that's needed to balance those low quality roughage diets that the beef cow typically deals with. Uh, there's a number of different uh, uh, livestock ration balancing programs that are available. And many of them you can go to uh, Oklahoma State University, for example, they have a program. Uh, the one I like is uh, from University of Minnesota, and it's, a, it's basically a free download, so if anybody's interested, they can download it. It's real easy to use. The, the nice thing about it is that it not only balances the ration, but you can plug in uh, your costs, feed costs um, or ingredient costs and, and uh, you can try different alternatives to come up with a, with a lower cost ration. But if you look at a hay type ration, which is a, I guess you would consider a, a standard old, old standby type ration for beef cows, um, your cost per day is going to probably run anywhere from a dollar and a half to two, $2.50 and maybe even more. Um, 
And again, there's a lot of variables involved there depending on the size of the cow, depending, but generally speaking, it will fall into somewhat that range. Now, if you plug in the same, uh, develop a ration with, say, uh, corn stalks or really low quality hay or straw, even straw, and uh, maybe five or six pounds of distiller grains, you can cut that down to around 50 cents a day um, on average. And that might vary from 30 cents to you know, 90 cents, something like that. But, uh, and again, it depends on what, you know, what the current uh, values are for the, you know, what the current market is and all that sort of thing. But the point is that generally speaking, you can formulate uh, a ration with co-products and uh, other lower quality feedstuffs at a much lower cost than some of our traditional feeding system. Now I understand. I understand that there's a lot of uh, controversy in certain um, beef cattle production areas. Um, you know, they look at the idea that uh, that uh, the, uh, ethanol production and other um, uh, corn processing procedures raise the price of corn and therefore lower the bids that they can receive for feeder calves and that sort of thing. But you know, here in the Midwest, we are almost all corn producers as well, and uh, I think the, the, you know, the overall benefit to our, uh, our uh, overall operation, uh, I, I think we benefit on both ends, uh, personally.